In this video you're going to learn how to paint a colourful portrait like Francois Neely. I'm going to use acrylic paint because it's got a quicker drying time uh, whereas the artist uses oil paint. I'm going to start with an accurate outline of the features. Even though Neely's portraits look simplified they are actually very precise. I'm using a palette knife to apply the paint. I'm starting with fluorescent orange. When you're ready to start with a new colour, make sure that you wipe off the excess of the previous colour on some scrap paper or some tissue. The next colour I am applying is a light pink, uh, which it seems to be a predominant colour on that portrait. I would recommend that you mix all of the colours that you need before beginning the portrait because it does speed up the process and it's also the way in which Francois Neely produces her paintings. She has one large table with all of her colours ready mixed and that helps her to apply the energy to her portraits without having to pause and think about mixing colours in between. I've just added some flesh tone there. And now I'm adding a deep red. Notice the way in which I'm using the palette knife. If you have small areas, you use the tip of the palette knife. If you have large areas, you can use the base and almost scrape it across. I've just started to apply a base layer to the lips, which is the same way that Francois Neely does the lips on her portraits. Um, then she lets that dry a little bit and then she will work on uh, dark and light tones within that section but we've just got a base layer to begin with. Now I've noticed it's very difficult to apply the paint with the palette knife I was using because it was too wide so I've just swapped to a thinner one to allow for more control. If you are struggling to get into the finer details and the small areas you can use a brush. It's important to note that your painting is on a much smaller scale than Francois Neely's. Um, her paintings are quite often two metres by two metres and you're working on an A3 piece of cartridge paper which is 30 by 30 centimetres squared. To put that into perspective for you, um, more than 40 of your pictures would actually fit into one of Francois Neely's paintings. The next colours to go on are fluorescent yellow and yellow ochre. Notice how I'm using the point of the palette knife to get the smaller areas in and I'm scraping with the base of the palette knife to um, drag some of the paint across large surface areas. Remember it's really important that you clean your palette knife between every colour that you use because Francois Neely does not mix any of her colours on the canvas. Uh, she likes to keep all the colours clean. The next colour to go on is a pale blue, which you can add white to primary blue to achieve this colour. And then what you should be doing is scanning across the whole image that you're working from and using that same colour everywhere that it needs to go. Remember that you can use a brush if you're struggling to get into the smaller sections. I have stuck with a palette knife to begin with, um, but I do use a brush much later on for the finer details at the end. Now I've noticed the paint is too wet on those lips and when I've put the blue on top it's sort of mixed in. So I've actually left that section and I will come back to it when it's dried a lot more. I'm just starting to add some darker tones now around the eye. I've actually switched from a palette knife to a glue spreader as well because it's much thinner on the edge and easier to control and get some sort of thinner lines on there by using the very tip of the glue spreader.
look for the three tones in the eye. So you should be adding shadows, highlights with the white and a mid blue tone. And then using the very edge of the palette knife again to try and scrape some thinner lines in there. And now I'm just adding a dark blue or with a little bit of black in it for the shadows around the eyes. And then going in between the top of the eye and the eyebrow. So we're just adding some uh, deep red to the eyelid now. And with that same deep red, I'm scanning across the image and I'm starting to fill in some of the gaps where those darker tones need to go. Now that the lips have dried quite a bit, I'm adding those darker tones into the lips. So you've got the, the shadow in the middle of the lips and you've got shadows on the edge of the lips. And then I've mixed a dark brown, which I've added to the nostrils. And now I'm placing the shadows on the left hand side of the nose. And up to where the eyelid and the eyebrow is. Make sure that you keep cleaning your spatula or palette knife or brush every time that you change a colour. And every time you use a colour, you need to be scanning across the image to see where else you can place that same colour. So the portrait is now starting to take a bit more shape as we're getting more and more paint and layers on there and filling in some of the white gaps, getting rid of those. Repeating the process again on the left hand side where the eye is, starting with the um, darker blue, adding the lighter blue for the whites of the eyes that are never white and then adding the shadows. So you should always start with the lightest colours first. If you have a large surface area to fill, remember you can use the base of the palette knife. Notice how the application of paint is nice and thick. That will glide across the surface much easier than if you're not putting enough paint on and you're having to scrape it and stretch it further. I'm now able to add some highlights to the lips because they've dried a little so we've got uh, some light pink on there. I've added some fluorescent pink to the lips as well and then I'm scanning across the image to see where else I can put those tones. Then we've got some different shades of orange going down to fill in the gaps. I've got fluorescent orange and I've also got like a brownie kind of orange. few more shadows going in on the left hand side. And then also having a look at the background and uh, filling in those gaps there as well. I 
And what Francois Nini does is she actually applies all of the paint all in one go, one colour at a time, and then when she's sort of happy with the coverage, she will then, only then, towards the end, take a step back and have a look at the balance between the dark and the light tones. And at that point, which is where I'm at now, she will then start to have a look at lightening some areas and adding more contrast with darker tones and areas as well. So as you can see, this portrait is starting to take a bit more shape now. Some areas have been lost by maybe a few too many colours or layers. So it's just taking that time to let the layers dry, step back, have a look and see where you can get that balance. So what I've done is I've added a few more pale pinks and flesh tones um, to bring out the highlights and I'm adding some smaller areas of the deep pink in there as well. It's a fine line between overworking the painting, getting too many layers on and actually knowing when to stop. So I just added some more shadows to the eyebrows there to make them appear darker. And now I'm scanning across the image to see where I can add some of those deep blues and the greens towards the bottom. Final few small sort of marks in there with the shadows, get a bit more uh, depth and detail in the eyes. The final stages of adding the smaller areas of detail, I'm using a fine paint brush rather than a palette knife to get into those areas and I'm starting with a pale blue for the whites of the eyes and underneath the eyes, around the top of the lip. And then adding some shadows around the nose as well to, to pick out the detail in those areas. And then above the eyelid and the eyebrows and anywhere else that needs some thin lines. It's much easier for Francois Neely to achieve this effect with the palette knife because her paintings are much, much bigger in scale. So that's why we've switched to a paintbrush just for these finishing touches because your painting is, is a, a lot smaller in scale. Make sure you keep stepping back and having a look at how you're getting on. You can hold it up and get somebody to have a look at it from a distance to help get the balance between the tones correct. And just be careful you're not overworking areas and getting too many layers on there and losing some of those initial marks and colours that you put down. <laughs> 